Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is have a look at the um, the, the, um, the gateway code. And um, just to recap, um, what we've got is uh, we've got uh, two PyCom loppies, uh, one which is a LoRa client and one which is a LoRa server. The, um, the PyCom loppy LoRa client is uh, attached to a PySense board. And what it's doing is it's measuring uh, temperature and humidity. And um, with that temperature and humidity, it's then um, uh, packaging, packaging that up uh, into a, um, into a, um, a JSON string. And um, it is then uh, sending that using uh, MacLayer uh, LoRa to uh, a LoRa gateway. So um, what we're going to do is have a look at the LoRa gateway code that's uh, receiving that packet and uh, how it processes that. The, um, the LoRa gateway, once it's received the packet, what it does is it then extracts the data out of the packet, reformats it into another, yet another uh, JSON string. And um, then using HTTP POST, it will uh, post it to a uh, MySQL database um, using PHP. Okay, so let's have a look at the, um, the gateway code. Uh, first of all, um, before we look at main.py, let's have a look at boot.py. Um, because there's something ha there's some stuff going on in boot.py here. Basically what we're doing is uh, we're setting up Wi-Fi because um, the, um, the gateway is receiving the LoRa packets and um, then if it's going to connect to a MySQL database, it needs to obviously have uh, connectivity to the internet and we're achieving this uh, through, um, through Wi-Fi connection. So let's have a look at the, um, the Wi-Fi connectivity being set up in uh, boot.py. So we've got import machine from network import WLAN. We're setting up our Wi-Fi SSID. Uh, we're connecting to a Microtik uh, access point, and that's our password. And um, then what we're doing is we're going to WLAN mode station, and we're creating a um, wireless LAN object. We're then saying WLAN.connect using the SSID. Uh, we're using WPA2, and uh, we're specifying the Wi-Fi password, which is up here. And we've got a timeout. And um, while not... WLAN is connected, machine idle. And then we're just printing out connected to Wi-Fi and we're going to print out WLAN IF config, which is a bit like IF config in, um, in Linux or IP config in Windows, which just tells you some basic information about your wireless LAN connection, your IP address, your default gateway, blah, blah, blah. And um, then we're transferring over to to main.py. So once we get to main.py, we've got a um, an established connection to the internet via Wi-Fi on our on our loppy device. So let's have a look at main.py. Sorry, just get rid of that. Um, so we're importing socket and uh, importing uh, struct as well. And from network, we're importing LoRa, and we're also going to import JSON. So we need JSON so that we can do some um, some JSON processing. Uh, we need to specify the IP address of our PHP MySQL server, which in my case is um, on the local network, uh, 192.168.88.247, and we're using port 80. So we'll just print out some um, um, stuff. We basically want the, um, the IP address of the, um, the PyCon device. So if I go WLAN IF config and I take the, um, the first part of the list, I can say I'm connecting to, that's my IP address of the, um, of the loppy, and I'm wanting to connect to um, this address. So in my case, they're on the same subnet, but they don't need to be. Um, the host could be anywhere on the internet. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start setting up the, um, the um, HTTP post string. Uh, which is going to post to the PHP uh, MySQL um, database server. And um, so this is using HTTP POST. This is the PHP um, file. I'm using HTTP 1.1. And I need to provide a host string. So I've got to use the, um, the host and the port, which I've specified up here. So they're the, um, they're the server host, and the HTTP server host and port number. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, setting up, because we're using a Mac layer um, LoRa uh, connection, radio connection, um, I've got a I'm going to specify a packet format. 
And uh, this is this is uh, just slightly modified from the uh, the PyCon example code, um, which is available on the uh, PyCon uh, tutorial website. And um, we've got um, one byte here for um, device ID, one byte here for packet size. We've got um, a dynamically allocated size of a string, percent %d, and that's the size of the string, and s specifies a string. So our code will actually determine what the, um, what the, um, the string packet size is. For our ACK packet, we've got um, one byte for device ID, which is the first one here. We've got uh, one byte for the packet size, and one byte for the, uh, the error code or 200 if everything is all good. So that's our third byte. So what we're going to do next is we're going to open a LoRa socket and we're going to use this time instead of last in the client we use TXIQ but in the server we're going to use RXIQ and uh, we're going to use our RXIQ so that um, we don't listen to our own messages and um, we just hear client messages. Whoa, just had a um, an issue. I might just... Um, uh, whoops, I might just uh, run that again. Hopefully it runs okay. Yep, okay, so we've got a bit of a problem there. We'll see if we can work out what that was later on. I might just take a quick look. Value error buffer too small. Okay, so I've got to, I've obviously got to catch something there, buffer too small. We'll have a look at that later when we get there. Um, okay, so we've got... Um, where were we? We're going to open a LoRa socket and using RxIQ, and we also want to use the Australian frequency. So we've got, uh, first of all, we set up our LoRa object, mode LoRa LoRa, which is raw LoRa, uh, Australian frequency and RxIQ, that gives us our LoRa object. And um, then we've got a LoRa socket, which is um, using af.LoRa, and it's a raw socket. And we're going to use blocking equals false for this, so we're not going to do any blocking. So Here's our, here's our our main body, so while true. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, Laura Sock receive. Now, we've got here 512, but really it should be 256. But anyway, we've got 512, so I guess any bigger doesn't matter. But the protocol limits it's 256 at these frequencies, so we should be using that. And um, socket receive, and this will, re this will provide us with a um, receive receive package so that's our that's our receive buffer if you like so what we want to do is we want to have a look and see um, that the receive package has got some data in it so we're going to have a look and see is it greater than two bytes so if it's at least received two bytes then we know that something's happened so we want to process it and see if we can get some more sense out of the rest of it um, so then um, then we've got here we're going to take receive package one. So receive package one is the um, should be the package length. Let's go back and have a look. The first byte is the device ID. The second byte is the package size. So this receive byte zero is the um, device ID, and receive byte one is the package size. Okay, so receive package length is receive byte one. So what we're going to do then is we're going to try, and I do say try, and I'm interested that it, um, it threw that exception because this try um, is there to catch that exception that we saw just down here before. Um, so we're going to try, and we're going to try and unpack using the uh, LoRa package format and the receive package length, which... Um, is our um, byte one. So that's our byte one, our receive package length. Now our receive package length should match the size of the string. All things good. Okay, so we're going to, so if this, what did we work out? It was 29, I think from the last video. So 29, so, so instead of percent DS here, that will read BB, 29s. Now this little exclamation mark at the front um, is tells the um, structure unpack that um, it, it sets a flag for structure unpack. It's not actually um, part of the um, the packet format which is being being provided or being sent or received. 
So, and this is our receive package and structure unpack is going to have a go at unpacking using, it's going to unpack the device ID, the package length and the message. All things being good, then um, we should be able to receive the data that we should be able to get the message data from the client and the device ID should match the, um, the MAC address of the client that's um, sending the data. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at this message and we're going to see if we can interpret the JSON. So we're going to use JSON.loads and we're going to load the we're going to load the message into the JSON object. And um, this is going to give us a JSON object, which we'll call um, measured vowels. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into object measured vowels and we're going to use the T key, which is the temperature key. Um, from the data that's been sent. So if we just quickly flick back to the client, we've got the T key, and that should give us this value here, which is the temperature. The H key should give us this, this item here, which is the humidity. So that's a, our humidity, that's the key, and that's the value. And this is our other, our other JSON data piece, which is the, um, the, temp, the T key, and the temperature data, which is associated with the T key. So that's the other piece of um, JSON info that's in the, in the in the string. So let's go back to our our gateway. Okay, so that'll give us our temperature string using the T key, and that'll give our humidity string. Now the temperature string is just the um, the actual value, but it's in string format. Okay and the humidity value, which is also in string format. And that's fine because all we're gonna do is we're just gonna reprocess these and then send these up to our um, database uh, using HTTP POST. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct a new JSON string with these values, temperature string and humidity string. And um, excuse me just while I have a drink. Sorry about that. Okay, so, and um, we're going to construct a new JSON string in just slightly different format, which is the format that our PHP code is expecting to, um, to uh, run a SQL query into, insert query into the database. And we're gonna say device name percent %d, and we're gonna give it the device ID. So that should be the MAC address of the client. Uh, humidity value percent %s was our humidity string. Temperature and a value is the temperature string. So then we're gonna print that content string and you can see, um, this is our, um, our content string. Oops, sorry. This is our content string. Device name, 140 is the MAC address. Humidity value, 43.26. Temperature value, 33.32. It's not quite that hot, but it's reasonably warm in here. I'm not sweating yet. Oh, just a little maybe. <laughs> okay, so um, we need to also work out our content length. So what we're going to do is content length percent %s and we're going to take the length of the content string, which is this one, and we're going to pass that into here. And that's for our HTTP post. So now we can format our HTTP post and it's going to be a combination of the content string, the content length string. You can see here the content string, the content length string. We've also got the post string, the host string and the content type string. So if we go back and look at those, we looked at those before. The post string, which is our HTTP post, the host string, which is the server that we're uh, connecting to, and the content type string, which you can see here is application slash JSON, because the post contains the um, the um, the JSON, the JSON data. So that's the actual data component of the HTTP post. So we print that out, the whole lot of it, and you can see it's all coming out here. Um, Post. This is the whole. This is the, all of it, including that. So we've got post. Oops. See if I can keep still. We've got post. Ah. Excuse me. This is our post. That's our host. That's our content. That's our content length. And this is the actual content itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to um, create another socket, not a LoRa socket, but we're going to create it. We're going to excuse me, we're going to create an internet socket, and we're going to use socket.socstream, and we'll just call that S. 
And this socket is going to connect to the PHP database server and, um, and we'll get a response back as well. So s.connect, host and port, s.send, we're going to payload. We're going to send all the payload string, but we need to encode it. Uh, we're going to wait for the response. Server response, we're going to receive the response and we're going to print it. And down the bottom here, you can see this is the response which is coming back from the database server. If you have a look at that, uh, it's an Apache Ubuntu. Uh, content type is text HTML. Oh, interesting. Um, but it's giving us back some uh, JSON, which we can still extract. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, we've got our server response. Now, based on this, um, I know that um, between the, the byte range or the, for B in range 148 to 192, that the JSON string location in the received data is between byte 148 and byte 192. So what I'm looking for is this bit out of the whole return string. And that starts at character 148 and goes through to character 192. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to get all of that and I'm going to stick it into STR JSON response. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a JSON object and I'm going to load in STR JSON response which is basically, I'm going to load in that string. And I'm not doing anything here, but if I wanted to, I could, um, using exactly the same method that I used before, is I could extract out the code. The code is one, which is coming back from the server. And if I wanted to, I could extract out the message, which is successfully stored using the same mechanism and do something with that. Um, I, could, I could respond it back to the client, uh, but at this stage, it's just um, it's there on the to-do list. So this is the key for the code value in the dictionary, which is code in this case code one, and key for message value in the dictionary, which is message successfully restored stored. Okay, so I mentioned before we had an issue with value error, and uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to catch that in this try catch block value error exception, we actually saw one of those. So I think I might need to um, move the try up a little bit further, maybe up up here. So um, in the next version, there's actually a later version of the um, PyCon sample code, which has error handling and all that sort of stuff. And it adds, um, it adds an extra, um, Add an extra byte to the um, ACK packet and it adds an extra byte to the packet format, which is a message number and it tracks message numbers. But it's a little bit more complex and um, I'm, for this um, demo, I'm just trying to keep it simple. So I thought I wouldn't go there with that. I'm just using the, um, the basic example and I'm trying to make it reasonably robust by um, using this, um, this try catch. Catching, catching the value error. So if I get a value error, then I either write um, buffer too small or JSON value error, because it could be one of those two things, but I didn't quite catch the buffer too small. I thought I'd caught that, but um, obviously not. I definitely catch a JSON value error um, because I was having the issue prior. So how these errors can occur is um, if, um, if not all of the packet is received um, or if the buffer doesn't, if somehow the LoRa radio um, gets lots and lots of data, then when it tries to do the unpacking, um, it doesn't match the packet format and uh, that'll generate a value error. Seems like um, um, this is probably generating a value error as well. So um, I might just move that try up above here to, um, to deal with that buffer too small um, issue. Because I think it's the I think it's the receive five twelve, so it's actually thinking it's getting more than five twelve bytes. So um, I reckon that's what the problem is. Anyway, getting back to where we were. Um, sorry to be debugging my code <laughs> while I'm trying to explain it. Um, the last thing we want to do is we want to send the acknowledgement. So here we're going to um, 
we're going to pack up the acknowledgement. So we've got LoRa package acknowledge format. So that's our three bytes. One byte for the device ID, one byte for the, um, the message length, and one byte of message, which is our 200, to say that all was good. Now, obviously, if we've got a value error, then um, we shouldn't send an all is good. We should send, hey, there was a value error, but there's more work that could be done here to improve this somewhat. And the, uh, the last piece of code, we're going to um, send the, um, we're going to send that uh, acknowledge packet back to the, um, back to the client. Okay, well that pretty well wraps up the explanation of, um, of what's happening here. As you can see that it seems to be humming along reasonably good. Um, I've only got one client connected at the moment. I've had multiple clients connected and um, I've had three clients connected and it's been running fine. So um, I think if I can capture that value, value error issue, um, then um, I reckon we might have a fairly robust uh, data logging system, radio-based data logging system on our hands. Okay, thanks very much for your time.